Um, I was really excited about the theme for this event because I spend all my life thinking about this topic. Uh, we run a research institute on relationships and human behavior. Now, basically what that means is, why do we do the screwed up things that we do in the workplace? What holds us back from success? And what's very interesting about all of that is every one of our fundamental predictors of success has to do ultimately with relationships with other people. And I'm gonna prove that to you today, but I'm also gonna give you some tips and some tactics and some things I hope to leave here and go out and begin to practice. But more importantly, I'm gonna give you a challenge relative to the next few months and your capacity to take what you learn here and put it in action, all right? Now, action really is all I care about, but we do have some pretty wonky folks in our organization. We're a science-backed organization. We get into the research. We've written a number of books on the subject. But one of the things we do do is something called a diagnostic. It basically is an, an ability for us to have a better understanding of who you are, what your relational competencies are, where your gaps are, et cetera. And if, you, if it's okay with you, I wanna start by doing a simple diagnostic on this audience. I don't wanna make any assumptions that the audience I talked to in St. Louis is, is, uh, is similar to this one. So I'm gonna read four shapes and sizes for you, just four. And I want you to pick one in your head. And when you pick that one, I don't want you to change it. Whichever one pops to your mind first after I read the four. You got it? Okay. A circle, a triangle, a square, or a Z. Circle, triangle, square, Z. Pick one. Now share it to the person sitting next to you. I don't want to give any of you a chance that you're going to change it. You got it? All right. Circles, raise your hands. Okay. We've got a problem. Um, that was well over 50% of the audience, right? And as a result, what's it? Well, here's the thing about the circles. Let me give you the good news first. Circles are out-of-the-box thinkers. They tend to embrace relationships and people fairly well, which is fantastic for an event like this. Not a surprise that this self-selected group showed up here to commune together, to be together, and to relate. That makes a lot of sense to me. The problem is those of you who are circles avoided anything that boxed you in made you feel claustrophobic or confined, those straight sides, pointy edges. As a result, 50% of this audience, a particularly undisciplined group of individuals. And apparently damn proud of it, which is fantastic. <laughs> triangles, raise your hands, triangles, triangles. Oh, good, keep them up, keep them up. Anybody sitting next to a triangle, be careful. <laughs> These folks will do anything to get to the top of an organization as quickly as possible. Right? And so just make sure that uh, before, you know, but just get to know them, by the way. It's a good idea to get to know them, and please stay on their good side, all right? Who put a square? Who put a square? Oh, good. There are some accountants in the room and actuarials. It's good. Um, these are the folks with discipline and rigor in their lives, right? All of you circles, find one of them. You need them desperately. Uh, they, by the way, it doesn't mean that they're antisocial. They're lovely people, as I'm sure you've met them already here. It's just that... Um, you know, what they do is they walk around an event like this, they collect business cards and they meet people and then they go up to their rooms and enter the names in a database. That's what they do. <laughs> they're the only one using your CRM system, you know. They're, anyway, um, then there's the Zs, the Zs. Now, the Zs are an inch, oh no, 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 keep your hand down. Um, yeah, what's your name? Uh, Carmi? Yeah, okay, Carmi. Um, yeah, I would have never asked you to raise your hand um, because that would be embarrassing, Carmi. Um, <laughs> from what we can tell, Carmi, um, Z's just preoccupied with booze and sex. We've... <laughs> She's proud of it, though. Anybody want to join, Carmi? Raise your hand. No, the Z's are the nonconformist, normal triangle shape sizes, etc. Carmi will do it her own way. Um, now, first of all, note that what we just did was not statistically significant, okay? Uh, don't be traumatized, but it was directionally correct in the following way. We spent 10 years trying to figure out what we call demographic linkages to your relational style. Demographic linkages to your relational style. What a relational style is, is your capacity to walk around the world creating an environment around yourself, inviting people in to want to have a relationship with you. But, so now what do I do? Because the psychology is working against us and society's not helping us. Is that what I heard? Now what do we do? 
Well, the answer is we got something going for us, and it's called being human. Because when we added an anthropologist to our research team, what we found out is that at the core DNA of being human, you are all tribal. 70,000 years ago at the birthplace of man, whatever you believe from a faith perspective, when we were born early on, we were tribal. It says it in the Bible. It says it in all of the, the textbooks these days. We existed in tribes. Why? If you weren't a part of a tribe, what would happen to you back in those days? Yeah, you'd be eaten by something. So those tribes were powerful. They were important. And in the core of every one of your DNA, you long to be a part of a tribe. You long to be a part of something powerful and, and important and something that's got your back. Something where you can let your guard down and be you. Something that, that is supporting you. And yes, accountability too. Something that'll kick your back in and, and make you the best that you are and not hold you back, but instead spur you on to greatness because they care and they know what you can, you can do. That kind of a tribe we need more of. Now, you've got to create that in this organization. But here's the powerful opportunity for you. What if you created that among your customers, among your clients, among your friends? These people are longing for the same thing you are. Society has failed them, and they're not having it as much as they need it and as they want it. And their psychologies are acting in overdrive the way that they are as, as insecure human beings like we all are, trying to float around and getting it done. What if you could provide that relationship that has their back, truly has their back? That would be providing a service that is not easily offered. Is this making sense to you, yes or no? And that first starts in your own head, I have to say. Your own ability to walk around the world, create an environment around yourself is, is contingent upon your own sense of safety and comfort. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. The challenge is a challenge of reaching out to others, but it starts with you. The data, I could go through the data and I wanna just very interestingly tick off a few things which I think are important. The number one predictor of career success, by the way, is relationships. Like I bump up against people all the time who are very frustrated with their career advancement and they're like, well, the boss just promoted that person over there because you know, she cares about him more. I'm like, no crap. I mean, she cares about him is a shorthand for a lot of stuff, folks. It's a shorthand for we share a vision. We share the same language. I can trust them. We share a set of values. I know what they're doing at the dark of night and I don't have to think about it twice, right? She cares about him means a lot. And it actually is the number one predictor of team success if that intimacy occurs. How many of you have ever had a boss that cared about your success? Raise your hands. I'm not gonna ask if he or she's in the room. Um, what did you remember? You tell me. What did you remember when you had a boss that cared about your success? What, what did you notice about you and other people's behavior? Shout it out to me. It elevated it. You bound out of bed with a little bit more of a spring in your step. What else? High energy. High energy, yeah. What else? Confidence, interesting. You know what I find out about this? When you have a boss that cares about your success, first of all, yes. There is higher energy, there's higher levels of productivity. What happens statistically is you get a 30% higher level of what's called employee engagement, which translates into 16% higher levels of productivity. Yes, you statistically bound out of bed with more of a string, spring in your step. But then what happens is what this wonderful lady who's got the bathtub just mentioned a second ago, which is that you then take risks. You have higher confidence. 